You are listening to the Sarah High School Podcast, your connection to the scholars, the athletes, the men of faith, the men of humility, Sarah Padres. Hello and welcome to the Sarah High School Podcast. I am here today with Dr. Gary Megan. I'm so pleased to have you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me on. Dr. Megan, you were department head of theology at Sarah for 16 years. You currently teach seniors. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what exactly you teach the seniors? Sure. So in the senior year, it's the culmination of all the, the three years that come before. So what we look at is the first semester is what does it mean to be a true man? And to do that, we have the boys read a number of, of uh, very important uh, writings from uh, great philosophers, great theologians, great sociologists to look at what it means to be a man um, in, in traditionally first. So we look at what Aristotle and what Plato might have to say, and then we look at uh, what, what does uh, Tongan literature say, what does Filipino literature or, or African, literature, African philosophy and, and Chinese philosophy say. And we look at it deeply, and the boys reflect on this and see what they look at um, as a person, what is a person to them, what is personhood, and then finally what is manhood. And then we, we look at that in relationship to today's masculinity. What does, what does television, what, do, what does radio, what does, uh, what, what does the internet tell us a, a man is? And we look at toxic man, masculinity. We look at the, the difficulties of trying to be what that sort of man is. And we, we look at that in relationship to what we, type of a man we should be theologically and philosophically. Very interesting. And so that's a build up to those very complex topics, obviously. And um, being that you have experience being the department chair at for a very long time, almost two decades, <laughs> can you just tell us just about just theology, its integration into the curriculum at Sarah as a whole? Sure. Um, since theology, theo means God and logos means spoken word, it's all about talking about God. Now, We'd understand that a number of our boys might be atheists, agnostic, and a number are Hindu or Muslim, but that doesn't stop us from talking about what is the numinous, what is the transcendent, these are big words, huh? what is the ultimate, uh, with a capital U for ultimate. So we start in the freshman year where we look at, um, we look at the great stories in the Bible, we look at the, the great men and women who have, uh, who have listened to God, done, done things that they thought were correct and sometimes were incorrect. We, we learn from the Bible stories. Now, we understand as Catholics that, that all of the stories in the Bible are true and some of them actually happen. So, of course, we have to look at it philosophically and scientifically, um, what, what we take from each part of the Bible. And then we look at uh, Jesus very deeply. That, that would be the New Testament. We look deeply at what uh, what Jesus taught us and how he lived. Because being an all-boys school, it's very easy for us to use Jesus as the ultimate man, the ultimate true man. And then, um, then we look at then how would you act morally, how would you act socially. And the, sec uh, the second year and sophomore year is morality and ethics. So that how do we act to our brothers, to our sisters, to our parents? How, how do we make those decisions that sometimes come up really quickly and knowing in a few years they'll be in college and making mm -hmm. those decisions? Junior year, the first semester is uh, Christology. Then it's all who is this Christ guy? Why is he God? Why is why is he also human? What does that have to do with us? And we look very deeply at who he is, looking at the Gospels, and uh, relating that to our lives. And and the second semester is fascinating. It's church history. So why are all these people sticking around and following Jesus <laughs> these last two thousand years? And we look at it warts and all because not not everyone's perfect, and uh, you know everyone wants the church to be perfect until we, until we realize that we're human. And then the the senior year, of course, first semester, what does it mean to be a true man? And the second semester uh, is what does it mean to be a true man in the world? How do we go out into the world and uh, and and do what we need to do in light of the good news that uh, we are loved? Definitely. Wow. And I can only imagine that that is, I mean, senior year, because we are sending our graduates out into the world to make a difference, that that has quite an impact. Can you talk to me a little bit about how, I mean, the transformations you see um, from the students? And I mean, this is, these are very, very big concepts. And obviously, <laughs> you know that more than I do. I'm, my brain is exploding. Uh, but how, I mean, what do you see in terms of like from freshman to senior year? I mean, that's a lot of thinking. That's a lot of, you know, really big concepts. I mean, how, how do you feel that the boys, you know, accept these ideas and, and learn from them? Well, what's really important and what, what's great is the idea here at Sarah of brotherhood, and that's a capital B. 
right? So it's brotherhood. So living that uh, throughout those four years, figuring out what that is, um, Mr. Ed Taylor tells the boys at the beginning when, when they come in that you are not a padre yet. You are not one of the brothers yet. You have to earn that. And that's the whole point of the four years. And the, the theology program supports that right from the beginning. So uh, it's, it's, it's inward looking. It's forcing kids, young young who are basically you know, adolescents, are forcing them to start thinking like a man, that there's more than, than just themselves in the world, right? That the family is critical in how we, how we, how we treat each other and how we treat our brothers here. Um, and I think that that's something that we, as theologically, put, put forward year by year. So one thing important for us is, how does a man love? How does a man treat women? How does a man treat girls? Yet we don't have girls on campus for a, a, a number of hours during the day, but before school and definitely sports and, and in uh, extra and theater and extra, yeah. oh, just powerful, right? So how do we how do we do that? And I think I think that's something that we can do very very powerfully. That's great. I mean, it sounds like the the curriculum and theology really transcends into so many different parts of the, the entire school, right? I mean, that's that's wonderful. But the brotherhood concepts and, and the way that people treat each other and, you know, and learn from that. So that's great. So what got you interested in, in studying this and making this your, you know, your academic focus? Can you tell us maybe a little bit about your background, where you went to college and kind of what brought you to Sarah? <laughs> big question. I'm, I'm going to ask you a big question now. <laughs> <laughs> big questions. So, um, yeah, I, I've, uh, my father used to joke that I have more degrees than a thermometer. <laughs> I actually... <laughs> That's amazing. I have five degrees, right? So uh, I went to my junior college, which I'm very proud of. Uh, my dad said, if you go to your junior college um, and save us all that money, we'll pay for your, for your last two years. So they, uh, I went to Syracuse after that. Um, I, I taught, uh, taught music for a number of years and uh, felt really called to the whole idea of theology. And I became a brother of Holy Cross, as, uh, uh, and you'll know Holy Cross like Notre Dame University. And uh, for a number of years, I was there and I was teaching um, and got involved in theology and got involved in understanding when I was uh, up in Colorado and uh, doing retreats uh, with Father Richard Rohr, um, the idea of, of manhood, the idea of the, of the four archetypes of manhood. What is a true warrior? How does a true warrior fight for what is right? Uh, the true lover, how does a true lover love and, be, and receive the love, right? Um, who, who, what is a true magician? The true magician is that man that you want to be like and you can uh, learn from what it means to be a man. And then finally, what is a true king? And that's those few men that everybody, all the men in the room, when that man walks in, you all turn around and you listen to that man like that. And so we look for those people in our lives. Interesting. And so after, so that was in Colorado where you were really invested into the Invested concepts. in doing that, right. And then after that, um, I, taught, I taught in the Bronx uh, and uh, enjoyed myself there. So I actually coming here after that, uh, it's like on vacation, very, very easy to do. So I've, I've been here for 20 years at Sarah and been very blessed. And I've, I've really enjoyed being here for that. Excellent. You said um, a minute ago, you said something about you were teaching music. And I, I do recall a couple years ago, I think that I interviewed a student that had, um, I'm okay to think of his name now uh, for the Traditions magazine, but you were at Central, right? In, yes, in I did Carlos. teach at Central. And I, 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 my favorite story is uh, at Brian. Um, I, I, when I was teaching, we needed a, a bassoon. And um, I, I, I laid out a bassoon out in front of the whole band. I said, is anybody interested? And he was playing, he was playing sax. He said, I'll try it. And he picked up that thing and he just played it uh, right away. And right now, uh, he graduated from the University of Miami. Right. He's got his uh, doctorate in music performance. I'm so proud of him. He's just yes. And what is his full name again? Oh, Brian. Brian. I know. I'm. It's. It, I can see pictures. We did a and great article on him. I know. Me too. But he's wonderful. <laughs> and but I remember. You know, I was so surprised to know that you were, you had you know taught music as well. So what brought you to the West Coast then? Well, um, when, I, when I was leaving the brothers, I, went, I, I stayed with the brothers at St. Francis in Mountain View. The great guys, and we had a wonderful time, and that's where the jobs opened up here, and I wanted to, to stay here in, in the Bay Area. Yeah, I, I grew up in New York, and you know, after winters and snow, you know, when I, that first Christmas here when I, everybody was just like walking around with flowers, I was just amazed. <laughs> I'll bet. It's very different. I know we complain about the weather, like when it's just a little cold, right? But coming from uh, New York, I can only imagine... 
Excellent. And so, um, so let's talk a little bit about you, what the seniors are doing right now. Um, I know that you are you're busy. You're integrated into their senior projects, and I know that's a that's a big part of the school year. Can you tell me a little bit about? your senior project that you have them do? Sure. So the senior project has everything to do with social justice. So when we think of justice, we think somebody's stealing something and then we have to get justice for that. We have to uh, do something about it. But um, social justice is when groups of people, when societies are doing something to other groups. And so we, we expand and uh, we expand our, our view of what we look at as justice. And justice is bringing balance back into the world because when something evil is done, then, then things are off balance. So the first couple weeks, we call it... Uh, <laughs> it's Fright Week, we call it. And what the boys do is uh, they get to, we have a whole raft of books, and they get to read some of the books. They get articles, we watch videos of things they've never seen, of, of, of man's inhumanity to man. And they find uh, something that either breaks their heart that a group is doing or makes them just mad as all heck. And what they do is they pair up and they research that project. What are some examples of, I'm mean, sure you've seen... I bet many students kind of come up with the same themes, right? There are certain, sure. you know, certain ones you probably see year after year. What are some of the, the most, I don't want to say popular in well, humanities, yeah, sure. but the sure. most commonly um, <laughs> bothered in well, humanities? Excellent. Well, uh, uh, food, food uh, insecurity is huge. Okay. So food justice is a big thing for, with the boys. We also see human trafficking is huge because oh. we, we have that pro problem right here in San Mateo County. And so... Um, not to a great degree, but we do have it here. So that that sort of thing is what they look at. Uh, we actually I make very proud. I'm a, one of our one of our groups is actually doing um, the lack of teachers and teachers uh, across the country, teachers who are leaving the teaching profession, public schools because of what's being done. I see. Uh, yeah, so a, that's current, very current. Right? Very current. Interesting. And so once they pair up, then what does the project entail from there? Well, then the next thing they need to do is find someone who's suffering from this. Find someone or some group and, and, and find that story. Um, they, they go online, they watch videos, they read stories, they, they go uh, and they watch movies. Anything to find something where that's really happening so that they can empathize, so that they can understand what's going on, right? And that's, that's what draws them in. Then the next thing they'll do is when we've done that, then we go on and we have them research. Online, they go all over uh, to find out the latest facts, the latest data. So it's not just this one person or this one group. Wow, it's happening all over the country. And then after that, then what we do is we look at ethically, like philosophically, why is this such an important thing? So we look at the different philosophers who will support them. So we look at well, Aristotle, Plato, Kant, uh, a number of philosophers. Um, and even we have a little, uh, number of the boys who do animal rights also. That's big. So uh, we go all over philosophically. Then we look theologically. What does the church say about all of these? And we do a number of readings there. So they not only have the facts and the story, but then they have a really deep and rich background with, with which to write. Um, each of these become a part of a page of their uh, website. So they prepare what they, they make their own website from each of these. They become a page. And then after this, then they're ready to interview an expert. So right now, they're doing their interviews. We have boys who are interviewing authors. We have boys who are professors, interviews professors at Stanford. MIT, we have an MIT group uh, today, a professor at MIT. Uh, we have a number of people that they... We have, uh, San Mateo Police and, and South San Francisco Police have been really, really helpful in interviewing. And what the boys will do, they'll do that write up. So that, could, so that all adds up to everything that they need to do for, for, their, uh, for their project. Until we get to the big, uh, the, the big ending, which is of course going to be the uh, the disruptive action, the uh, the uh, design thinking. Interesting. So we're going to get to that. But prior to, I just have a few questions. So mm -hmm. is is this start the first semester of senior year or second semester? Second semester okay. of senior year. So uh, it starts the first day. Yeah, first that's what I wasn't sure. Yeah. I was like, wait, which, which, how long is this project? Yeah. Interesting. And so I mean, that blends so many skill sets. I mean, you've got interviewing, you've got reporting, you've got you know statistics that have to support it or deny it, the claims. I mean, that's a really, I mean, that's almost really putting in practical, like, collegiate writing. Well, and, and, and here, and even more, you're right. And then we, you add on, we do the economics. We also do, it's government is involved because they look at the laws that are involved here. And also, at the end, these websites are written to be presented to and used by the freshmen. 
So while they're doing all this research, they have to make sure that they're writing at a ninth or tenth grade reading level. So they can't you. So they have to be careful. They explain all the terms that everything makes sense uh, for the ninth graders. That's great. I mean, that's a great way to learn how to write in general is for a broad audience, right? So that's a skill right. set that'll take forever. <laughs> you know, right? I mean, and this is the thing. I mean, Rushton Hurley, our good friend uh, who works at Teachers here, also, you know, when he always says that when you write for the teacher, you know, you write so it's good enough. But when you have that larger audience, it, it, and, and they're going to meet and, and talk with these freshmen, it becomes really, really important for them to have it done well. Interesting. And so tell me a little bit more about the disruptive action por- portion of this project and how it then connects to the freshmen even more. Okay, so when, when they come to, to the end, we can't just leave it as this is a problem, what are we going to do? And uh, we want to look at not charity. Now, charity is important, right? Charity is a stopgap. We throw, we put money at it, we start, stop it for now. But these things that they're looking at need to be looked at deeply. What is the root cause of this? And change that. And that's the justice part of it, right? Charity is not justice yet, right? So what we do is we use design thinking. Now, design thinking... Um, uh, some of us have been trained by SAP Corporation and how to do design thinking. I got advanced work at Stanford. And so what we've done, all of the seniors then will design a disruptive action, something that can be done so to alleviate the suffering permanently. And so, and well, yeah, this is very exciting. So we, we have four steps that we do this with. The first thing is we empathize. Um, we go back to that story again. And we go back to that person or that group or, uh, and, and, and see what, and what is the suffering, what is really causing it. Okay, so um, she doesn't have money to feed the family because she's a single person, a single mother. Why doesn't she have the money? Well, because she can't go to work. Why can't she go to work? Well, because she doesn't have money for diapers, so she can't leave the child at daycare. So we go back and back and back and back. And so, well, she, she needs diapers. Well, goodness. Well, if the, the problem is she can't get diapers then we need to do something about that. So it takes a while. So when we get to that point, we're defining the problem. The problem is she doesn't have diapers. So then what we do is we put a couple groups together and we come up with as many ideas as we can. It's crazy. I like we say, boys, okay, look, you've got all the money in the world. You've got all the expertise, right? But what's great is all you guys, you have, you have different backgrounds. So you can come up with different ideas. Come up with as many as you can. And they come up with, and they can't talk. They can't talk for seven minutes. And they write as many stickies as they can. And then they put them up and they go, oh, I never thought of that. And then they put them up like, look, so what are the easiest ones to do? What will make the biggest impact? And then we do, the, we iterate this over and over till we get one thing that's powerful, right? So that's the ideation. And then what we do, for we make a prototype. And this is the fun part, and they just love it. Oh, I bet. Oh, so the whole room is nothing but scissors and colored paper and stickies and, and, and markers and tape, and it's, it's, it's hilarious. And they only get a certain amount of time. Okay, this, if this is what you're going to do, then you're, then you're going to make, quickly make that prototype. And okay, everybody stop, and then we share it, and everybody looks at it. Because it's one thing to write something out, but then when you see it, when you really see it, so the prototype gets very exciting. Oh, that's great. And then how is that, and then that, is that then shared with you know, the, the other classes that are going to be reading the websites? Or Okay, so, well, this is very interesting. So with the prototype, um, it can be like the one, one group um, two years ago was worried because, um, because drugs, the opioids, there was no way to know you could cross straight li- state lines and no one would know you were buying from that pharmacy. There was no way. So they designed... Uh, a, a national registry for opiates that uh, pharmacists would have to use. And it was this huge, wonderful thing. That, and uh, um, and they went through a number of, of, of changes as we went through. Uh, so that would be one sort of thing. Uh, another was a, a, a place for veterans that, uh, that could, they could drop in at any time and get advice 24-7, especially homeless veterans, on how to, on how to get help. And they made uh, a little house. And they showed exactly where every where the line would be for them and where every desk would be. And this is the sort of thing that we do so you can visualize it. And then, uh, then what would happen is they would take pictures of all of these, but they would also keep them. And then the pictures would be the last page of their project. So there is hope. There is always hope because we are men of faith and we care and we know and we have hope that something will be done. That is amazing. Can these be viewed by, I mean, do you do a, a show at the end or something? Yeah, well, this is so interesting. Yeah, so this is great. So what happens is um, they, uh, a week and a half before the end of school, uh, for the first half of the period, 
uh, uh, the freshmen are given a specific uh, uh, website to look at. So they, they look at the website and they make little notes of what they see. The second half, they meet with the seniors who have prepared that and they just talk. And my goodness, it's, it's just amazing how much they've learned, how, how much they, they love it. And this is, the, this is the culmination of what this project is going to be about for the freshmen. And then what happens is the seniors will get another day to make it look good, and then it goes live on the Internet. Oh, that's so neat. And, so not, and it's really fun because sometimes one of the boys will go, oh, my gosh, I got an email from an eighth grader who wants to cite me. And I said, well, oh, there you so go. Cool. There that's you amazing. Go. And so uh, about what time of year does this all happen? Oh, this is that. I know it's happening now, but I mean. Oh, well, yeah, so doing all of that, this is the last week and a half of school. Okay. Before the end of school. Interesting. So I can only imagine, I know that design thinking is a big thing here at Sarah, and I know that there's actually a class, and I know that we're, you know, hoping to create spaces that will um, invite and welcome, you know, more, you know, col peer collaboration and, and creation and design thinking. Um, how does this exposure to design thinking for students who might not otherwise take that class, I mean, how does that help them in the future, do you think? Well, this is very powerful because the, under the idea that, that they if they're going to solve a problem, uh, whether it's in engineering, right, or it's in business or where, wherever, in, in medicine, the idea that you need to empathize, that you don't tell those people what they need, that they, you have to get from them what they need, that's, that's, the, that's the huge thing. That's the big difference. That's great. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's such applied learning. In so many, so many, I mean, if you think about how we all learn differently, right? We all have a different way of you know, conceptualizing or just our perspectives or whatnot. Um, I can only imagine that just that blend of, of perspectives just might make just such a, a wonderful experience that they'll never forget. <laughs> they do, and, and, and we add many things. So here, here they, they build a website. Um, they also have to build an infographic for their facts. They just don't list them. They do a whole, uh, you know, very artistic infographic. So they learn how to do that, right? And they learn how to, to come up with ideas and not be afraid of, uh, and I mean, incrementalism is very important, I think so. But once in a while, you just have to jump off the deep end and try something that seems crazy that just may work. And, I, and that, gosh, we, I mean, look, look where we are in the country, you know? That's right, what, that's, that's what's what we, happened. That's Silicon what we did. Valley as a whole, right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that's a really neat connection with the freshmen too. And then they, of course, probably anticipate their um, senior year and having to to kind of prepare for that too, right? So it's a oh. little a little hint from the next couple of years to come. Well, that's what, and, and the seniors always start. Oh my gosh, I remember when we did that, and we had this, and we talked about the, the porpoises, and we did this, and yeah, it's it's a big thing. And what's wonderful, it gives them a super ownership of this. Plus, the idea again, it's the we go back to the brotherhood. You do this for yourself, yes, but we also care about everyone else, and so this allows us to do this for the freshmen. And they put so much more work into this than something just for themselves. That's great. Well, Dr. Megan, the students love you so much. In fact, I was just telling you, as I walked over here, I, I said to one of the seniors, I said, hey, I said, do you have Dr. Megan? He said, yes. I said, what do you love most about him? And he said he, he, he forces us to, teach, to learn at a higher level, to think at a higher level. Um, so, and I know that I've heard that many, many times. But if I ask you, what is your favorite part about teaching the seniors? My favorite part, oh, thank you for saying that, Bob. Uh, my favorite part about teaching the seniors is that they're at this they're at this liminal place right now where they're not quite high school kids anymore, but and they're almost college kids. And to see them move from the one place to the other is 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 the most powerful thing to me. They are they are truly growing up, and they're becoming the young men that I think their parents and the community want them to be. That's great. I mean, it sounds like you send them off, your department sends them off with a lot of things to think about and, and a lot of things to analyze about themselves and the decisions that they make moving forward. So that's great. Um, what are your hobbies outside of teaching? I'm, I'm sure you're probably a vociferous reader. I can just, I'm guessing. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, we have to read a lot. I definitely be good to put prepping. But uh, the big thing is um, my backyard. Ah, uh, yes, I grow flowers and all of oh, that. Yeah. And so, and, and all of my neighbors, many of my, all of my neighbors are all almost all retired tech people and we just love our gardens oh, how neat yeah and so we we just hang out in each other's gardens and they'll just tell me stories of remembering when they started apple or they started google or the, and and oh, wow. uh, yeah they're they're really fun but just hanging out with the guys in the backyard is is what we do that's amazing and what about um, what about your connections with um, the group in china can you talk a little bit about yes. that for me yeah so i i worked with the um, uh, uh, U.S. Catholic China Association, and the U.S. Catholic China Association uh, 
is uh, a, a group sponsored by the Jesuits and, and other orders that um, brings together professors from uh, China and the U.S. and brings together students, college students, uh, from the China and the U.S. and is now looking at doing more for our high schools, especially our Catholic high schools, and uh, in the future, even bringing Catholic teachers over to China and Chinese t uh, teachers over here. And also, we have a number of wonderful uh, Chinese students. Uh, kids are international students, and we love them to death, and they're great. And what we want to start doing is is uh, having some sort of bridge between them and the Chinese students at Santa Clara University, uh, showing uh, so that there is this sort of men mentoring going from the older to the younger. That's great. And how did you get involved in that? That sounds so interesting. Oh, oh I uh, <laughs> just happened uh, to, to see, be, uh, being a, uh, an alum also of, uh, I got one of my masters at Santa Clara, oh, okay. that there was a notice that there, there was this big meeting going on, and I happened to meet, go there, and then people I knew and, and people I, uh, you know, just really enjoy. Connected with, yes. Yeah. And you mentioned that you've been to China several times. Yes. And, and do you travel often? Are you a, Well, you used to, yes. Yeah, of course. Yes, and, and just... <laughs> Life's uh, a little different now, but yes, pre-pandemic. In fact, I, I, I spent uh, 12 straight years, 12 summers teaching English in, in Vietnam, in oh, the countryside. Yeah, and that was, that's a joy. And I, in fact, uh, I have a boy, he's a, a young man now, he's a, like a nephew to me who's actually visiting right now and they're, you know, we're spending time together. So I have a lot of uh, people I've known since they were kids and now they're married and have families and it's, yeah, yeah. So uh, Asia is very important in my life. I see, yeah, that's wonderful. I bet, I bet you have ma major connections with alums. Do you, do you have a oh, gosh. huge Rolodex of friends? Yes, <laughs> and, and it's great. Well, the, the best thing is to be on, on LinkedIn. And so we all, as teachers, we're all on LinkedIn. We're always seeing how the, how the young men are doing and they're growing. And, you know, we've got pilots, we've got doctors, we've got dentists, we've got guys who own their own big plumbing companies. And I'm just, I'm just just overwhelmed all the time watching that, and that's fun. I'll bet. Just had uh, just had coffee a couple of weeks ago with one of our guys who's at uh, who's at Cal and and doing biology and just loving every second of it. And I, I got a free mug out of that. So Very nice from Cal. So maybe we should say, do you like receiving free mugs? Yeah, it's you all can about just plug that. It's a, it's it's about coffee. <laughs> it's about I, coffee. I have, uh, they know I like coffee. That's amazing. Wonderful. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Dr. Megan. I just want to ask you one last thing. Just your experience at Sarah, like what is the secret sauce here? What do you think is, makes Sarah so special? You it's know, obviously teachers like you. Our faculty yeah. is amazing. I, I, I tell you, you know, I, I, I keep up with uh, my friends who are teaching in uh, public schools and other schools around the country and good schools, great schools. But there's just something about walking into Sarah where everything is just relaxed, where people care about each other. You know, uh, people uh, just, uh, there, there's nothing like the camaraderie here, the way that the girls are treated when they come here, the way I enjoy them, they're always fun with me. And, and the way that I think the faculty looks at the, at the young men as kind of like our nephews, as, as family, you know, and, and we really care that way. That's great. And I think that we feel the same about our tri-school community as well, as you just mentioned, too, oh, yes. with the girls and, and just, you know, the, the unity here. So wonderful. Well, I appreciate all your time today. You are so interesting and have so many wonderful things to, to teach our, our young men and to also enlighten us all with. So thank you for your time today. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so all much. Right, thank you. All right. Go Padres.